Welcome back to my reviews. I had a big plan when I went to the flea market on uh, Sunday to walk in with my camera going and um, take some movies of the uh, flea market and some of the vendors. But I didn't even get close to the building and my battery died. I knew I'd forget something. Anyways, this was a nice find. A couple that uh, usually have a table there had this one. And it's a Rosebud Kitmaster plastic scale model. Made in Northamptonshire in England. And this series started in 1959 and uh, was finished by 1962. This one here is a Harrow Schools class locomotives. And it's a HO00 scale. first thing that attracted me to this was was the box art. This one here is a British engine, Sterling. Uh, single, I guess they call it. And it's number nine in the series. This is an early American general, number three in the series. Here's a Duchess of Gloucester, Coronation class, number four in the series, and an Italian tank engine, number eight in the series. This is the Biggin Hill, Battle of Britain class. English Electric Deltic Diesel, it's number 10 in the series, and Stevenson's Rocket, and this is a saddle tank engine, number 6. Here's a sheet of directions, different information, parts list. Some history on the school's class locomotives. The school's class three-cylinder 440 type locomotives with names chosen from those of famous schools were designed and built by the former Southern Railway. To haul express trains on lines where larger and heavier locomotives were not permitted to run, particularly on the route from London to Hastings via Tonbridge, which had tunnels of restricted width. This is interesting. During the 1939-45 war, following enemy air attacks on trains, one engine was fitted with an armored cab as protection for the engine, but it was found unnecessary to fit further engines. The RAF and other defenses having taken action to prevent such attacks. Another engine while standing on the Cannon Street Railway Bridge over the Thames, received a direct bomb hit on the cab, but damage to the bridge was prevented and the engine was eventually repaired. The engine man escaped injury 
having left a cab shortly before the bomb fell. It's kind of interesting. Now I looked through all the parts on this kit and uh, I looked through all the parts and this kit had been started at one time by somebody and uh, as you can see shows the operation there, the rods. And the other side isn't done. I look through the parts. It's got all the parts to start this side except one. It's actually one of these rods that's missing for the other side. So I might have to fabricate something. I'd like to assemble it and I'd like to paint it up a bit. First thing I did is put these um, decals in a Ziploc. I'm not sure how good they are, but I'll find out later if I build it. There's the coal load cold tender sides. There's the boiler on the sprue. So I guess that missing part, that's why the original owner never got any further on it. There's the main platform. Kitmaster Rosebud. Rosebud was actually a doll company out of Rons, R A U N D S, Northamptonshire. This series of kits was introduced in 1959 and it included 34 rail locomotives and coaches in double O, H O and T T scale, which was tabletop. It was approximately one one hundred and twentieth scale. And they also produced a motorcycle kit in one sixteenth scale. And also, I believe they did a Fireball XL5 rocket model kit from the Jerry Anderson series. That might be kind of a neat one. Even though initially this uh, series went over quite well, and there was a pretty heavy uh, advertising campaign, it didn't do as well as the uh, makers thought it would and Rosebud eventually sold the molds to uh, Airfix Products in 1962. And nine locomotives and the motorcycle later were reissued under the Airfix brand. Uh, they even made a motorized box van so that you could run your uh, train on the tracks. Imagine on Hornby Double O or something like that. And the box van came pre built. So that would have been kind of neat to have a motorized car so you could run your train on the tracks. Anyways, like I said, by 1962 they had sold the uh, 
molds to Airfix products. I might try my hand at fabricating the missing piece and building this kit up. And if I do, I'll uh, do a little review on it and show you the results. Now some more finds at the flea market were uh, four matchbox I got. This one's number 10, the Leyland uh, pipe truck. It came into the matchbox series in 1966. And it should have a load of uh, plastic pipes on top or on the back. It should have a load of plastic pipes on the rear, but it doesn't. This one came into the series in 1966. And it had a plated grill. And headlights and this small base plate here and it was an insert it had blue tinted windshield black plastic wheels and later on this uh, Leyland number 10 was changed to uh, ergomatic, which was the style of cab. Got super fast wheels in 1970, and it was deleted in 1973. And when it got super fast wheels, it got a plastic uh, clip for the posts. And they got rid of these metal posts. There's also a size difference in the uh, posts, the metal ones. I can't remember what the what the difference was, but it's a nice little truck. I'll have to find a load of pipes for it. And the next one I came across was the uh, number 17D, the Foden Tipper, with Hoveringham logos on it. Tipper lifts and the tailgate works. Swing that right around if you want so it doesn't uh, fall open. It's got the hydro sleeve. Hold the tipper up. Now the earlier ones had uh, silver painted grills and headlights, but uh, later on they had no painting. And that's what this is. It also had spring suspension, which is made of little plastic clips on the first three axles. And then they did away with that too, but they 
cast a little triangular bump under the front axle you can see that gives it that um, suspension look This one came into the series in 1963. It never did get super fast wheels. And it was deleted in 1969. It's a nice little Foden. Next one is number 47C. DAF uh, container truck. And it's missing the uh, plastic top, which could have been silver or gray. I think they went silver when the super fast, but they were gray with the uh, plastic wheels. Again, the grill and headlights are an insert, are an insert part of the base. Originally this was a turquoise cab and a yellow back and then uh, changed quite quickly to silver cab and yellow back. Went to super fast in 1970. That's another uh, nice model, super fast version of this. Again we got this hydro sleeve which will hold the tipper up and the final one is number 69B the Hatra shovel this came into the series in 1965 it's a nice model Use a bit of a turntable there. It's got those uh, wheels that come off very easily. I like it though, it's a nice model, some nice detail. And this one was deleted in 1969. Well, I hope you enjoyed looking at these uh, little rigs and the tractor, Hatra tractor, shovel. I thought they were a pretty nice find at the flea market. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.